In this video, you are going to learn how you can add a comments section to your framework website without writing a single line of code. This video is perfect for you if you, for example, have a blog on your website and you want to give the ability to your visitors to quickly share their thoughts. My name is Nandi, this is Framework University, and let's get started. I'm going to break this video up into four sections. First, I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this component. Then I'll show you how easy it is to use it on your Framer website. We're going to also take a look at how we can integrate it to the Framer CMS so you can easily add it to your blog posts. At the end, I'm going to also show you how you can handle inappropriate comments. So without any further ado, let's jump into the first section. Well, the thing here is that this component doesn't require any authentication and the result is some advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage is that some people might use fake names to write comments. So don't get too excited if you get a comment from Elon Musk. Pay more attention to what people are saying rather than who is sending that message. On the other hand, the advantage is that it is super easy to set up. You just drag and drop it to the framework canvas, publish your site, and you're basically done. Your visitors will also be more likely to leave a comment since they can just enter their name, type in a comment, click publish, and the comment is live on the website. They don't have to go through any long and tedious sign-up processes, so user engagement on your website will probably also go up. So that's about the advantages and disadvantages of this component. Now let's go into the second section of this video and let's see how we can set it up and customize it within minutes. So here I am in this framework project and if you wanna use this comment section, we just have to copy and paste it into our website. If you wanna copy this component, you just have to go to framer.university. If you go to the resources section there and search for comment section, you're gonna find this component and you can just click the copy component button and paste in your project, just like me. As you can see, I pressed comment and we, and here is the comment section on my canvas. So now as you can see, we have some placeholder uh, content here to comments. We also see how an error state will look like and how the uh, empty state looks like. But if we look at this preview, you'll see that these actually disappear. And if we publish the website, we will actually see the content uh, and the comments that are under this comment section. So this is just a preview that we see on the canvas. And we can go to the right panel and see all these properties here. And we can click into these and edit them to customize the look of this component. So these are pretty self-explanatory, but there is a couple of them that are quite interesting. So what I want to show you is, for example, the comments. If you go into here and go to avatars, you will see that we can change these avatars here. And if we zoom in here, you'll see that these profile images are basically changing based on the type I choose here. So I wanted to make this comment section a bit more interesting by actually generating unique profile images for each comment. And it was quite tricky because of course we don't use any authentication. So the user is just entering their name and their comment. So how do we get a unique image for them? So basically these images are generated for their name. So for example, if I type in a comment with the name Nandi, this will have this profile image. And if I type in another comment with the same name, it will have the same image. And as you can see, we can have different types here. So let's see, we like these uh, fun little faces. And the great thing is that we can actually also control the colors here. So we can add our brand colors. So we can add this blue here. We can add maybe a white color and also a gray. And as you can see, now it is customized and fits our brand and each comment has a unique image. So I think this is a pretty fun little touch. So 
basically that's what I wanted to tell you here. I'm, I'm gonna just quickly run through these properties and customize these comment section, but I'm gonna probably speed up this part of the video. So now as you can see, I customized some of these properties and I have a comment section that fits my brand. I can also change the empty state here. So if I want to write something else, I can do that as well. And what I also want to show you here is that if we go to the preview, you'll see that if I change the size of this viewport here, you can see that it basically changes to a mobile version automatically. So you don't have to care about responsiveness. It is responsive out of the box. You just don't have to do anything with that. You can, for example, set the width to fill and apply max width of, let's say, 700 pixels. And then, as you can see, if I start resizing this viewport, it will nicely adapt to different changes. And so what I can do is I can open this website and let's see what happens if I type in the comment. Now, as you can see, we have no comments yet, so the empty state is working. I can type in my name, Nandi, and then write my comment here. And then if I hit comment, then we now see our little comment here. Another great thing about this comment section is that if I try sending more messages to this, so for example, I want to send another message, as you can see, I will not be able to do that. I will get an error state. And that's really great because this basically prevents other people from spamming your comment section. So as you can see, it says that you cannot send more than two comments per day under this comment section. Another thing I want to show you here on the right panel is the ID property. So as you can see, this ID property is right here, but I just left it empty. I didn't specify an ID. You only have to specify an ID here if you are using multiple comment sections on the same page. So for example, if I duplicate this, and I want to have two separate comment sections, I have to specify that ID. Because if I don't do that, what will happen is that we will basically get two comment sections which have the same content and the same comments. So if I specify an ID on the second one, for example, let's say this is the second comment section and republish the website, you will see that if I reload, now the second comment section doesn't have any comments. So these are now two separate comment sections. Okay, so now let's go into the third section of this video and see how we can integrate this into our CMS. So as you can see, I have a CMS collection here on this website, which is a blog and it has all these items. And I have a data page here, uh, which has this really minimalistic design. And in order to integrate this comment section to each of the blog posts, I just have to paste the comment section here on this detail page. And basically that's it. I don't even have to set the ID. Now, if we publish this site, we can come here to the home page and click one of these blog posts. So let's take a look at this one. As you can see, we have the comment section here. We can write a comment here. So Nandi, first comment. Let's see. Yeah, it is added right there. And then if we go to the next blog post, you will see that if I scroll down, this doesn't have any uh, comments. So basically, as you can see, we just added the comment section to the detail page, this single detail page. However, the component knows that, for example, this one is a different page on the website. So it will have a unique comment section on this one. So I can say that here I am David and second comment. So now as you can see, it will be added right here. And if I go back to the previous blog post, you'll see that it has a completely different comment. So as you can see, these are nicely collecting these comments separately. So now that we learned all this, let's go into the last section of this video and learn about how you can delete comments that are inappropriate. So basically you just have to go to spamcomments.learnframer.site. I'm going to leave that link in the description. And as you can see, this is the website that you will see. And you just have to follow these steps. So you have to type in your name, your email, 
just to make sure that if I have to contact you, I can do that. And you just have to write the details here about that comment. So first of all, the website that you are using that comment section on. So for example, if we have this blog post and someone said something bad here on this comment section, I would have to type in this URL. So I could go here, type in that URL, and we also have to specify the comment. So the content of the comment. So let's say if this is the comment that I don't like, then I can type this comment here. And basically that's it. Here I can also go nandi and nandi at gmail.com and I can click then report comment. And basically that's it. Uh, I will take a look at these requests and delete all these comments uh, if you get any inappropriate ones. But you shouldn't worry too much because this comment section also has spam protection. So in theory, people cannot really type in bad words because their comments will just not be allowed. So yeah, but if you have any, just uh, report them on this website and I want to make sure to handle them. So that's how easy it is to add a comment section to your framework website without writing a single line of code. Make sure to go to framework.university if you want to learn more about Framer. I have a bunch of free resources, components, remixes, and tutorials just like this. So it's going to probably help you a lot uh, on your Framer journey. So that's it for today. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more. And I'm going to see you in the next one.